Alright guys, back here with another video, and I want to make sure, before we do anything, I want to thank all of you for all the support recently. We have gained almost 100 subscribers in the last month, which is fantastic, and shout out to all of you guys that have already done all the things I've been asking you guys that are simple, like smashing the like button, leaving comments, and joining the Discord, all these things... Don't cost you anything and support me and the content that I make. I've been making content for you guys for a very long time. And I hope to be able to reach 4,000 subscribers soon. And to be able to kick off this case tournament in the Airfare Game and Discord. Make sure to join if you haven't already. And uh, there have been quite a few signups already. And I don't want you to miss out on your spots. So make sure that you go ahead and secure your slot in the case tournament as soon as you can. It does start on the second. And once it fills up, that's it. So make sure you join. And this is the very first case tournament like this. And we're going to have some uh, stream and stuff like that. So if you guys don't even plan on playing, but you guys are wanting to watch, we were, we'll, be, we'll be streaming the tournament in some games. And we will also be streaming locals every Saturday night. Make sure to tune in. And I see that some of you guys did already tune in uh, this past Saturday night and did let me know about the squealing noise at the beginning. And if you guys want to watch that stream, make sure you join. I mean, watch that stream that's on my channel currently. Uh, you just search my name on there, uh, and you should be able to find it. But if you skip the first 20 minutes or you mute the first 20 minutes, eventually the squealing noise goes away because I figured out what the problem was. And I really, it was my first time ever having that issue, so... It was new to me, and it was some feedback issue with my uh, computer overheating, I think that's what it was. But um, it wasn't overheating, it was just making a weird feedback noise, and I had never had that situation happen before. But, I promise you guys that this deck profile, we got the first Zamasa deck profile to at least 50 likes, and we have hit almost 80 likes, so if you haven't seen that build, um, it's similar to this one, but there are some main differences, and I know you guys are eager to see what it's like. And, Zamasu, leader attacks... Add two Dragon Balls from your deck to your hand, uh, from your deck to your hand, or from your left to your hand, and shove your deck afterwards. Awesome. Plus one of uh, well, it's a plus two when you're attacking one second. Really awesome. But it does suck that you can't do it turn one. But it's not that big of an issue because you're playing yellow, and you can play defense, so you can at least get to that point. And also, you also have a, an alternate awaken that is interesting to, to note that once you get three life and you play this aggro deck, you can hold those dragon balls in your hand if you know they're going to knock you to three like super fast so that you can get off your triple attack earlier and you can hold them and then throw them all of your drop and that allows you to where you don't have to worry about them going back into your deck and you draw them over again. Even though drawing them over again is not that big of a deal because that's the coolest part. When you uh, do your wish to a flip over, you put you draw one card and then put all the Dragon Balls from your drop area back on the bottom of your deck. On the back side, it has a similar effect, but it doesn't have to attack. So on your Awaken turn, after you attack and grab your Dragon Balls and then Awaken, you get to draw a card or grab a Dragon Ball. Which, if you didn't do what I said earlier against an aggro matchup, you're just going to grab one of your Coercions and then get rid of a God and then draw two. But, and then it will get a Dragon Ball draw more. Same thing. Then it has a triple attack effect, just like Magic Kabir, and it plays a Zamasu with an Indestructible uh, it gains Indestructible as a 2 cost, so you play that guy for free from your warp, which is really cool. And, uh, yeah. So Masu gets his wish, and then flips over into Goku Black. So let's go ahead and get into the Dragon Ball Ratio, since you do need your 7 Dragon Balls. We're playing 4 of your regular Dragon Ball. This card is very key, in the sense that you don't want to have to go through uh, so many Coercions and have to rely on having gods to be able to play. Three uh, coercions. This is the Dragon Ball that's made for this deck specifically. Warp a God, draw two. Very similar to Trade In from Yu Gi Oh! Or Destiny Draw. I've heard all the people different different types of comparisons. And the targets you really want to see early on, sometimes turn, turn one if if possible, is the Zamasu self supported. This guy, pay one. If your leader is Goku Black or Zamasu, you add this card from your warp back to your hand. And it's also really important to be in your hand so you can play. Your Aegis card. And this build, I'm going to go ahead and preface this, that you can tweak this to with, play without blue, uh, which is a very small splash, and then that it will be up to you. You would basically just play more yellow cards. But let's get into the rest of the, the main standard package. Four of your SR Goku Black. This card is fantastic and is the equivalent to Turles for this deck. And also this is splashable, so you can play it in any deck because it's just like Bergama from your hand. But for... Example, this card's always treated as blue, which is not that important for this deck specifically, the way it's built, but it can be uh, interesting for other decks. And then you also have the ability Limit 1, and this is the main ability. You either pay 1, activate battle, 
you get to, oh sorry, activate battle, pay two. Uh, if you have two more blue or yellow cards in your battle area or combo area, you play this guy from your warp or hand. So that's why I'm saying it's similar to Bergamo, and, but you don't have to worry about resting something to reduce his effect. Then when he's played, you rest from your opponent's uh, non-leader cards, which most times is your en opponent's energy, so you can make them play with less energy, which is crazy. Then it has the Turles effect. Uh, since got to the warp by paying one, draw one card, and KO something in rest mode. So he'll attack, then warp himself, and basically you can loop him every turn. But um, typically you don't even have to worry about getting rid of him on board because you can play him uh, multiple times from your warp after coercioning the ones from your hand. Yeah. Then you have the egg special. I was iffy on this because I'm playing such a small count, and you'll see uh, there are less blue yellow cards in this version this is a the agus card you mainly want to go into this is you're not going to ever really go into this card and if you do it's because you drug the game out too long and that would be the only reason you get to that point uh, because of the way the deck's built but um yeah this card is fire it also is the reason why the deck is built the way it is you pitch one blue yellow card back to a battle and you get to reset two energy and then rest one of your opponent's non uh leader cards which is identical to this effect so you get to do both of these effects after resanding during activate battle after you use this first agus effect on the first time using the board and he plays himself by paying a blue and a yellow so that blue ye blue yellow energy is important for this build specifically to see in your first three turns in my opinion you this is the way you want to build it for this specific build and i'll go through a test hand at the end but he comes into play for two energy if you have a google black and as a monster in your combo area very easy to set up then you have four of your check land. This is what he's specifically here for. You're going to play him in active mode because your leader is Goku Black and Zamasu. So um, that's his only real purpose in this build and to be Aegis fodder after you already get your blue yellow energy. And like I said, if you end up playing him in this build specifically, it's because you're playing it something that can't get rid of him and you've got a position to where your hand is allowing you to do so because there's not that many blue yellow cards. That's it for the blue yellows. Only eight blue yellows and I guess... You can you can consider beans as discard fodder as well, but not that important. Uh, for robotic repost, this build has four specifically because um, it's a little more glass canny and since like it's more gimmicky at setting up um, more, your blue yellow cards or less blue yellow cards, you do need to buy some turns sometimes. Make your opponent have to rest their cards to attack. It's really good. And then you have three copies of Steadfast Assistance. This card is a staple for any yellow deck at this point, uh, except for Sinchiron, even though they can still play this card. This is a Crusher Ball that draws you a card, and it's a blocker. Two of the extra cards to go with those, because Coercion does count, because it's a yellow extra card, but you do need to charge like one yellow extra card, in my opinion, uh, during your early turns to make sure that you can have your Repose rep rep turned on early as turn one, and same thing for your Steadfast Gokus. But two black command man, I can see myself bumping this up to three potentially and cutting final flash down to one. But they are both so good in different situations where you want to have access to both. So, in a best of uh, one pre side, you can side the third copy of this and again, certain matchups where your opponent's going wide. But main use of this is removal and it's also resting two of your opponent's cards on your opponent's ten turn and drawing a card. And final flash. Uh, this card is a um, yellow staple for negating skills during battle. Uh, makes it to where your opponent basically, if they go all in with a double striker, um, you just make it to where it doesn't kill you. It also has 15k boost. Two copies of the reinforcements. This card really good in this deck because it makes sure that uh, when you establish unison, you can protect it, and it also allows you to go into battle step if your opponent is only attacking your unison, so you can activate Aegis to lock your opponent out. And Power of Super Saiyan's cards limited. Rest one of your opponent's battle cards or unison draw card for free. As long as you have a yellow energy open. And the build plays still four Krillins. I think this is too good. You could say uh, it's necessary to play like one Zamasu or one um, green-yellow super combo. But in this build specifically, I do not agree. I feel like you really need to dig for your Sensu Beans and dig for your other... Um, Blue yellow cards to pitch for Aegis, so you do need to make sure that you're digging as much as possible this deck. So, or Krillin Super Combo, bottom deck, draw two. Then the Unison, I did cut this down to two. Uh, I was seeing it a lot more than I wanted to, and then sometimes it's just 
not necessary to have in your hand at all. It's also a card you can't combo with, and you don't want to charge all copies are unison, so uh, typically don't. I try to charge this turn one sometimes, and then because you dig so much, you'll draw one of them. So three was like how, that's how I felt about three, but then now, uh, once you see one, that's all you need. So you charge the other, or you can tuck them up under if you draw both, and that happens sometimes. But this guy like helps you against those early aggro decks like Gogeta Zeno, and helps it to where you can stabilize. And then two cooler. So. If you're wondering where's the crazy difference, and here's where I want to go into it. So this is not too complicated. You're playing four copies of your free green-yellow combo. It's also a rival card, but you don't really do that with this card. You're using this card specifically so you can rival this amazing card. Turles, Dominus at Hand. This card is fantastic for any yellow deck at this point. Uh, it also works in green decks, but... He's especially good in green yellow decks because he has a 16k blocker arrival for one yellow. And you get to also KO something four or less. Doesn't matter what position it is in. So it gives you that green removal in yellow, which is crazy to me. Because yellow has a problem killing things uh, like dark black, power black, sand, and stuff like that. But this doesn't care about all that. It allows you to where you kill it and draw a card. And then also has an... You don't have to rival, you just pay one yellow if you have two or more of these on board. So if you spam two one turn and then next turn you just limit one, pay one, play him. So he's a 16k blocker. So if your opponent locks you out, he is not just a 15k that you can opponent can just neg 15 and kill him. Uh, he's also a four cost, so he's above that threshold for three cost or lower killing. And he just it's really hard to remove. And he's he's a blocker. So if your opponent block if you block a leader swing that's 15k. It's not, I mean, they're going to have to pitch a card or he just blocked your attack successfully, free negate. And also, it helps you protect your unison, which is really cool, too. Four seems to be to go along with that. And even, I think I'm crazy, but this deck is 60 cards. It's basically, I trimmed down the blue-yellow part and put in those eight green-yellow cards. And it, it works fantastic because you get more use out of that energy. So when you get to stabilize through the later game, you get to have more removal and more aggression. And Bean is... No, like, like it's like no crazier than it is normally. You get to do the old Aegis plays as well as being able to play, like, fire off multiple of these. Uh, we are lucky, uh, unlucky, however you want to look at it, that we didn't get to do this with uh, with Aegis Bojack. I wish I would have been able to. That would have been awesome. And then, one Bergamo. This is basically bigger. Goku Black is limited to one. Which if it was at more than one, you play more than one in this deck specifically. Pay two whenever your opponent's card is rested. So if you rest something with your uh, Aegis card, you have to play him immediately after and rest two of your opponent's cards. And it's crazy. Then one fighting his fate still and one wicked sand. Now secret rare slot and the overrun slot are debatable, but I think fighting his fate is really strong in this deck specifically. You can also argue that. Uh, Furthering Destruction Champa can have a slot in this deck specifically. I most definitely would have one in between my side and main, as well as the third copy of the Black Command Maya. And then also I would side deck this card right here, Vegeta Striving to be the best, as well as Poutine. These are the other cards that you can potentially play in this deck if you want to substitute for something else that you don't have. But uh, Wicked Sands can also be Pan, Spring Kai Time, and those are the main cards I think you can play and substitute for this leader if you don't have Wicked Sands. Uh, there are a few other options as well you can play, but I think that Wicked Sands fits the criteria the most. It's a green-yellow combo, so you can, after you combo this, and you, uh, so what happens is you're typically going to activate your Aegis, or Aegis, sorry. I'm so used to saying Aegis, but it's Aegis. My apologies. But um, you're going to activate this guy. Restand to energy, play your, uh, well, you're going to rest one of their energy, right? And then you're going to combo this. You can arrival in the Turles. Senzu being up, uh, you can arrival a second Turles. Depends on how much energy you have, honestly. And then you can pay two all during that same same combat step. Kill, so you draw one of each of these, and then you get to play Goku Black or Bergamo if you have it, if you're that savage. And then at the end of that whole thing, if you if like you already established the Aegis, 
Aegis guy on your opponent's turn earlier on in the game, you have so much energy to play with. So at the end of that battle, after you did all that and reached the energy, so this would be a later turn, like turn uh, turn four. It's not really that late, but and then you pay two at the end of the battle. Since you rested two of their cards, and there's no telling what else you rested if you had like a black command mayor or whatever, you pay two. He comes into play, and your opponent discards two cards. And or rest four of their cards so that he doesn't come into play. So that's a win-win unless you're playing as King Cold or something like that with field spells. He comes into play and he has a dual attack blocker. So you get a blocker, blocker, uh, two rests and blocker, and two cards out of your opponent's hand as well as two energy rested at minimum from this just th these two interacting, which is crazy. So basically, you just have to be really careful when you play this build specifically. But we'll do a test run hand right here. Just because I had a few people asking to do a few test run hand runs and figuring out how to do it. So we'll do it from scratch. With zero cards. I do need to shuffle this thing up really heavily. I wish I could go back and edit this stuff, but I don't really typically do that type of thing. But yeah. Also, make sure you leave in comments. And uh, maybe I'll play this in stream this upcoming weekend. I let somebody borrow this deck with the regular build last weekend. And he was still getting used to the deck. He was working on building his own copy of this, of his own deck of Goku Black Samasu. Also, if what deck are you going to play at the Dragon Ball Fest or the Best of One Case Tournament with presiding just like the Fests? Because I do believe after watching uh, last weekend and how long the games are lasting, I'm probably going to have to make sure that our tournament is probably 40 minutes for one game at minimum because webcam does take a bit. Especially if me playing just in uh, in person, again, trying to read people's cards, took 32 minutes sometimes. and But we were slacking. So maybe 40, 45 minutes just because of webcam. Just to give people, especially newer people, like newer to the uh, game, have a little more time to play. What do you guys think about that? Okay, so we're going to shuffle this thing up really good so you guys can get a true... Like, as if my opponent shuffled and I just played a few games. And Okay, so, if you guys don't know how to play Dragon Ball, this is a good run-through. So, at the start of the game, you get to draw six after you let your opponent cut. And we're going to look at a... See what we're going to keep. So, Mulligan strategy here. We want to see this in our opening hand. And this, honestly. So, it's okay that we saw both of these. And now, the other cards, we don't need more copies right now. We're probably going to draw into more copies of the god. So, we're going to assume we're going first, which is not always the case. So, sometimes we get the Dragon Balls quicker. We're going to shuffle those four back. I'm going to shuffle real good. And uh, let's see what we can get. And let's see if we can get this Aegis guy alive as soon as possible. And if we do, that would be really nice. Um, turn two is nice, but like in this deck specifically, don't have that many targets for pitching. So you do if you see multiple copies of this card, and you see more co like multiple copies of this. Like we just saw another one, but there's an, in reality there's only once you've established those two cards, you have six other left in the deck. So you can't do it that many times unless you pitch a bean, which is not impossible. You pitch a bean and another yellow card. So now we're looking for a. There we go. Okay, there's a Dragon Ball. So you kind of don't, you like like to see the Dragon Balls, but it's not that important. Now we're going to bring our 8 life over here. I'm going to try to see if you guys can see. Let's see if we can see the board. So we've got the 8 life, and we will go first. So we will charge this turn 1, which is fine. And uh, we can go ahead and fire off the Dragon Ball and draw a card. Because that's what it does. You just discard it and draw a card. So it cycles. Now we've seen this, which is really nice. That's one of the cards you really need to see early on. doesn't have to be turn one but with an, a coercion. But it's nice if you do. But you have to have this and a Goku Black to even play this card. So that's why you don't ru you're not rushing to play it. But it's nice. We're going to take one damage. Because I'm assuming that this damage is going to hit me. Oh, drew a power of a Super Saiyan. We still have... These cards in my hand right now. Okay. Next turn, gotta make a charge decision at the start of the turn. That's one of the harder parts of this game is making sure you're charging the right cards. You never want to charge your super combos. And we've already seen two. 
which is crazy, but we're going to charge this final flash so we can have an extra card alive, and then we'll have freeze alive on your opponent's turn the next turn. So now we'll attack with our leader, and our leader says that we're going to look at our life first. So look at that life. So it's not crazy. We don't have anything too crazy to remember that we have in our life. Because you do need to know that whenever you're playing this deck specifically. To remember, say, oh, there's two Goku Blacks. So uh, we can't warp one of these. If we draw one, we need to, because you need it to arrival. You can warp it afterwards with your Zamasu. So now that we've seen that, it's really important to know. Uh, we ha we do know that there is a fight against fate in our life. So there's only the only over we have. So if we do draw into it... Fine. If not, we don't draw into it. Cool. Shuffle your life. Put them back over there. I'm currently at... I think I'm missing... Did I miss out life? What happened to my life? Did I take two? Okay, I think I messed up. I swore. Yeah, no. I, f I just actually forgot to put a life. So, this random card is in our life too. Oh, okay. well, never mind. That's one of the cards we're going to grab. So, we're actually, we're going to six. It doesn't matter. Okay, cool. We're gonna grab that one coercion, and in this case, we're gonna grab grab one more Dragon Ball. Uh, we're gonna grab a pretty Dragon Ball. Cool. Okay, shuffle up, and now we just have to remember there's a Fighting Against Fate and two Goku Blacks, which is actually a pain because you don't want those in your life. But cool thing is we'll have a proposed live. We'll, we'll guarantee to get another tour, tur another turn in most cases. Okay, and we have a powerful Super Saiyan as well to help cycle. So now we're going to draw a card first with Dragon Ball, not with Coercion. Even though in this case it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. We got a pitch card for our first, for this Zamasu use the first effect. We're going to make Coercion. Warp the one Zamasu we have in our hand. We have a, we have more targets. These are other targets, but we're not going to get rid of those. We need those. We're going to warp the Zamasu. Draw two. Cool, we drew a one of, and we drew a counterplay. Cool, we don't have any more Dragon Ball, so we can't do anything crazy. But we're, in this case, we're actually going to activate the Final Flash. Not Final Flash, tap the Final Flash, and grab the uh, Zamasu. No, don't get confused. Just adding the Zamasu back with us, activate uh, main limit one. So now our hand is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, with still six cards on life. So now we do need to make sure that we defend. So on their first swing, in this case, we're probably... Since we, we could have tapped like the blue-yellow energy because we don't have a bean in our hand or anything like that. So we can't like threaten bean. So probably actually would do tap this one instead because we have the power of a Super Saiyan in our hand. And it's not bad to cycle because we're going to try to gr dig for certain cards. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And we do have the repost live. So on their first swing, we can repost. Which is fun. Or we can try to hopefully get a Goku Black out of our life. Which is kind of what we're hoping for here. So we're going to power Super Saiyan on their first swing. And rest one of the cards and draw a card. Cool. We drew a green yellow for combo. It's a free combo cost as long as your leader is yellow. And then we'll take one. I hope this is a Goku Black. And it's not a Goku Black. Makes it harder. We need to see the Goku Black. Next swing, we're going to most definitely repost so that we're, we're at five life now and we have reposted them for the first time this game. Cool, cool. Re no, untap. Draw for turn. Drew a we drew a final flash. In this case, this is where it gets a little complicated because you have to know what we're playing against. And if we know we're playing against something that we're trying to, we're going to hold that cooler against. We don't really need it right now. So we'll charge. So we still have one cooler left. And this was our last final flash. I wanted to keep that. Okay, attack with leader. And we're going to grab another Dragon Ball. Dragon, Two Dragon Balls. Specifically, we're going to grab a Coercion. And a Dragon Ball. We still have one more Coercion left in deck. I could have grabbed two Coercions. But we don't really... Actually, in this case, we're actually going to grab... Two copies of Coercion because we really need to dig for that uh, Goku Black t so we can combo with it so we can play our rival. Uh, it's not a rival, the blue yellow Aegis, Aegis guy. So our hand's getting kind of fat, so we're going to go ahead and use Aegis after the battle's over. Get rid of this Masu. Draw two. Cool, we got a Turles. Then we're going to add back this Masu. 
with by paying one. And then we're going to do that same effect. Send them back to the warp draw two. So we're in a tough spot here. It's not impossible to like do things, but we're still missing uh, two Dragon Balls, which is okay. I'd rather miss two than one because if we're missing one, then we don't get a free plus next turn, which is kind of important. So if it's not going to kill us if they hit us or try to go at us next turn. So we're going to assume that we're going to counter play one of their next plays and draw a card by tapping this one yellow. Draw one, we got a beam. Good thing we didn't tap that blue. Uh, they attack us, we'll take that one damage. There's the Goku Black we need. But now the issue is we don't have access to that Zamasu because we warped it. But it's not the end of the world because we have super combos to pitch, uh, get rid of stuff and try to dig. We have, we know there's no Zamasus in our life, so we're going to pitch the. Uh, a pitch in this case the unison we do have a repose in our hand now but we kind of wanted to get this to get this off so a draw draw there it is cool so now we got to do we had to do cool things uh we'll activate senzu bean resand and now we got a boost on our leader combo with the zamasu combo with the goku black we just took out a life which we knew we had two in our life which is pretty rough now we play this, the stamped Zamasu specifically, being funny, but the um, cool thing is we now get rid of these guys and draw a card, so that's cool. We'll activate this, pitching at the extra copy of this, and once we do, you get to rest, yep, gotta be the Aegis, the Aegis and then resand an energy and once you do you get to do that now we have we're in a position to where we could have uh we can bergamo now or you can activate goku black and in this case probably just going to activate the goku black and, and then we should be straight from there or if we are scared of more Onslaught, instead of playing him immediately this turn, we can play the control game. Combo this, play this, he draws me a card. Cool, that's not really that important right now. And then their next swing, you just hit him with the repost. But if we were trying to hold that repost for another turn, we could most definitely Final Flash or Bagal Mode if, if possible. Then you resand your energy, and you, this is where it gets interesting because you do have another energy already for that. We're going to charge this because we didn't take the life with it earlier, which would have been nice. Uh, we don't really need it right now because we already established, but we're going to activate our leader after swinging. Grab the last two balls. And this is where it gets fun. So we draw two. And then we put those Dragon Balls back, flip over, and draw one. And so cool things are cool. We're going to draw two of these. Really strong. Got more fodder. And if we did want to play the big dog, like if you were playing against something where this would be. Almost unkillable. You you could play it. Uh, you well, you couldn't play it right now, but but you can choose to. Nah, not really. Not in this case. We would have had to charge one more of these to be able to play it because you need a second. Actually, no. Never mind. I'm wrong. I could play it right now, but it's not that important to do that. You will kind of want to hold that energy so that you can Bergamo and kind of play and do stuff next turn. So cool. Uh, draw one, and we're gonna oh, just a combo. We're gonna put all these Dragon Balls in the bottom of the deck. But since we know we're grabbing back a coercion, we're just going to add it to better hand and shuffle our deck instead of put them on the bottom. Cool. You've awakened by activating your wish. Turn into Goku Black. The board's kind of clogged, so I do apologize, but I uh, probably would have blocked with the uh, Goku Ape last turn if, if necessary. 
Okay, and then now we get to do what we can do here. We can pay one to add back one of these. So we get a free actual two draws here because you get to get rid of a resource that we just got in our hand for one energy. Okay, and we got the Dragon Ball draw card again. And um, now you just have to play the defensive game and continue to loop the Goku Black from your warp as many times as you have to. And right now we can just play it from our warp, activate battle. If they need an energy, and we can be more aggressive, and we because we have be double bean, and yeah, on their turn, you just be defensive, and you, we'll draw a bunch of cards with like super combos, and then yeah, the deck's really fun. So make sure to take give it a try. And I'm sorry this video is a little long for those of you who are trying to like skip to the end and find the end of the deck list. But uh, if you guys like this type of content, make sure to. Leave a comment below and let me know what you guys want to see next. Deuces.